So I want to record a quick video on how to install EDSs. Um, one of the things is because in our PLC3 class, we're going to try this semester to work with some IO blocks. Um, they look like this. You know, you'll see these a lot, but they need to be set up. And you could be getting out in the industry having some type of hardware that isn't Alan Bradley or new Alan Bradley that your computer hasn't recognized. Um, and sometimes you can like go into RS links. And so if I'm in RS links, I can right click on something like this here. And I'll say upload EDS from file. And you can do that. Um, the problem is sometimes you don't have admin rights, like we don't. So if I upload the EDS, so if I right click on the device, for instance, and try to upload the EDS, it's going to give me an error because, and, and all that is electronic data sheet. Oh, maybe they cleared it out. But it allows me to then figure out what that is. So that's cool. So I just upload the EDS. It gives me the communication stuff. So that's one way of doing it. Um, it allows you to then see what things are easier in reality. So some, but a lot of times you might first load in something that looks like that. So it has a question mark. Um, you can kind of see that right there. Um, and that's that IO block that I just showed you. A lot of times manufacturers will uh, work with and give you these things. So in the case of this, this comes from a company called IFM that, that we bought this from. And since we purchased it, they gave us some EDS files because their goal is to make this as easy as possible to interact with Alan Bradley and Siemens and some of these competitors so that you buy from them. So they're not trying to make it hard. So now if I want to install it, let me go into uh, Logic Designer or Studio 5000 or our Logic 5000. And under Tools, you'll see EDS Hardware Installation. And I'll click in and you should see a familiar window. In theory. Come on, open. Because in this case, I was able to download all of this stuff here um, from that setup. And it may take a second because our computers are slow. Ah, there it is. And now I hit next. And I can register an EDS file, um, unregister, create one of my own. I wouldn't recommend that if, unless you're really good. And so now I can browse and find where this is. So I'm gonna click on this and copy. So I can go right there. And there's that EDS. Sorry about the interruption, but there's the EDS file. And then all I have to do is hit next and it will come in. And look, it has a little icon and everything so I know exactly what it is. You can program without the EDSs, but it makes your life easier because now I can add stuff in, in my IO tree. So in this case, you know, and if I go back to RS links, it should show up that way. And if I hit auto browse refresh, Eventually, it'll show up. You know, you and I both know RX Link's a little glitchy, but you can see, hey, look, there it is. Now you actually know what it is and the properties it is. Device properties gives you all you need, and if you want to do some module configuration, you can go in and probably adjust the IP addresses and everything like that. So, really cool. Um, you, and sometimes you may get new processors, you may need to do that. But that just allows the software to be able to interact with RS Links better. That's all I got. Have a good day, and I hope that helps.